Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, got the privilege of talking to Joe uh, again, you may remember uh, we talked to Joe a, a few months back. He's a, a hunter from Mississippi, and he gets uh, called in to interesting situations where people are having uh, maybe not the best encounters uh, with Bigfoot on their properties. But how are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I hope your uh, day is going well. Yeah, it's it's a good day, just kind of chilling out, and we're getting a little bit of rain in Iowa, but we need it, so that is uh, all right for me. So, yeah, we uh, we getting a little bit of rain here. It's been cloudy the last couple of days. It's uh, fall time for sure, so we'll get our week of fall hopefully before it uh, turns into winter. <laughs> Absolutely. So around here, you know, I hear that sometimes the Bigfoot activity starts to amp up a little bit in the fall. Is that the same thing down in Mississippi or? Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, in my area where I live, uh, it, it amps up between the middle of September all the way up through February. And then it kind of dies down in the summer months for the most part is uh, quiet but this year uh, we had activity uh, a little bit uh, all all summer uh, not not uh, every day or anything like that but just little stuff here and there uh, but uh for the most part in uh, the autumn time uh, they're transitioning from eating mostly uh, plants to uh, going into um uh, finding their nuts or acorns and uh, then of course you know, mostly a meat diet in the winter time so it stuff does uh, pick up around here oh in the fall. absolutely and we had been chatting a little bit on uh facebook back and forth and it sounds like there's some some interesting things happening pretty close to your area recently Could, would you be able to share a little bit about that Sure. Uh, we, oh, I, I have stuff ongoing a lot. I, I tell people, uh, uh, a lot of times that it seems like I'm a magnet for these animals. Uh, but, uh, ever since I've moved here in this, uh, house, uh, we've had, uh, continuous, uh, activity, uh, not every day, like in some places I live, but, uh, this time of year, uh, for example, uh, when the sun starts going down around 6 30 uh, twilight hits it's like somebody opens up the gates of hell and you hear all kind of screaming and it's multi octaves and uh, it, it might last uh, one scream might last uh, two or three minutes and then it'd be done for the day and you might hear all uh, that uh, two or three times and it's done and uh, it may be answered and it may not. And I'm not sure what that's about. That's something unique to down here. But I've had uh, friends uh, come over uh, that I was telling about a couple of years ago about it. And uh, they uh, researched. I, I'm not a researcher. I'm a hunter. But uh, they researched and they come over while they were setting up their uh, uh, equipment uh, they heard it for the first time and it, it shocked them so much that they they completely forgot about their equipment they were just sitting there saying what in the world how do people around here not hear this and i like, listen i don't know how they don't hear it i hear it. it's the reason why i invited y'all to come over and uh, and listen to this stuff but uh, we have stuff like that uh there's a there's a lot of uh 
owl imitations this time of year. And even though there are owls, you can tell the difference. Um, you know, uh, an owl will, will make the same sound every time because it's an animal that doesn't mimic other animals. But when you get an owl that starts out sounding like an owl and then uh, morphs into sounding like a crow and then sounding like a uh, primate uh, uh, laughing or whatever, you know, that's that's not an owl. I, you know, even though owls, uh, especially barn owls, can make some pretty uh, hair-raising sounds, uh, you can tell the difference if it's an owl, uh, you know, for one thing, an owl doesn't sound like it's 500 pounds on on a uh, blast and uh, PA system, and the uh, volume is a, is a thing that I look for for that too. But yeah, there's been there's been a lot of stuff going on uh, uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, I, I had uh, a Sasquatch uh, crawl up to my camp or uh, my bonfire I have out here in my backyard. Uh, had one that was uh, standing in the uh, tree line, and the other one crawled up. And uh, I was sitting around uh, uh, listening to some music and stuff, and uh, I saw it, and uh, and it acted like it uh, didn't think I could see it. So I snapped a picture of it. So uh, you can see the eye shine of the two creatures in the picture uh, where they were there. Uh, you know, stuff like that. It's, how high up would you well, estimate that eye shine was in the picture? The one in the tree line was probably at least eight and a half feet tall. The one on the ground, oh, it, it barely crawled up. I watched it. Oh, I got out the next day and oh, I hadn't had my grass cut at the time. You can see where it had crawled up and oh, and laid there for a little while. And you can see the outline of it. Oh. But it, it kind of spider crawled up there. I can't explain how they do it more than more than that. I guess the elbows and the, and the knees. The elbows are out and the knees are up. But it's almost like a crouching cat. But they they crawl sideways and it's it's weird. Oh, you know. But oh, it, it's kind of freaky if you're not if you're not expecting something like that. And, I haven't seen that a lot, but in this area, I've seen, I've had uh, these uh, creatures coming on my property since I moved in here. Uh, matter of fact, the first day that we were moving in, there was a tree uh, within uh, five feet of the west side of my house that had a, a tree twist in it. And while we were moving in, uh, I just got married to uh, my wife at that time, and. Uh, I was telling her, you know, look, that it, it looks like a Bigfoot twist on that tree. And she was laughing at me, and her uh, her son was uh, laughing at me until we had one uh, scream at us from across the fence, like directly across from that tree. And uh, their jaw dropped, and I was like, see, I, I told you, that's probably what that is. And the house that we're in uh, now uh, had been vacant for a while, uh, I think that they were getting up under the porch, uh, uh, and uh, the younger ones were staying around there till we come around, and uh, they got upset because we moved into their house. But, uh, yeah, there's there's been things going on. Absolutely. So you mentioned screams a few times. Are these? Do they sound almost like uh, human screams, or is just uh, something that's just completely different? than any other sound um they they sound like human screams so just like a you screamed at the top of your lungs just one loud blast uh, that happens more in the early fall time uh, in the uh, summertime it sounds uh, more like a, a loud yawn like, oh, you know, like that right there. But it sounds like someone took a deep breath and almost like they woke up and they have the huge lungs and they yawned as loud as they could. And that happens in the uh, uh, 
early evenings a lot of times when the sun goes down right right around there and i've always attributed that to a yawn that's what i thought it was oh uh, and i'd hear this on on podcasts and stuff and they'd call it a moan i'd be like well you know why would an animal that big that wants to stay hidden a uh, moan like that and to me it makes sense if they if they woke up they were just yawning and and uh stretching or whatever you know uh, that makes sense to me but that's what it sounds like uh, to me it's very that's very interesting have you heard of any uh any sounds that sound like whoops in around your area yes uh i hear them all year long um uh, uh you you walk out outside and uh you can uh, like well this this week uh I haven't been out uh, in the last couple of nights, but Tuesday night we I was out there, and uh, it was quiet, and I heard <laughs> like that right there, and it was just one time. Well, about five minutes later, I heard a uh, tree knock, just one loud whack, sound like somebody took a uh, a, a piece of. Uh, uh, oak and hit it up against uh, a pine tree and it echoed real loud. Uh, I've learned that uh, I don't know how it is in every area but down here where I'm at if if something answers uh, another animal it doesn't do the same thing. For example, if it, if it makes an owl mimic it's not going to answer with an owl mimic somewhere else. It's going to be either a whistle or a quick whoop, or a, a tree knock. Or if it starts out with a tree knock, uh, there's going to be a vocalization, but it's not going to answer tree knock with a tree knock. And, uh, you know, I've I've got into arguments with people that, that say, well, no, if they have a tree knock, that's saying I'm right here. And another one's got a tree knock over there saying I'm over here. And I'm like, well, I, you know, it's not worth arguing over for me. I know what happens here, and I can just uh, talk about what I've uh, experienced in uh, my real life. So what they do over there, I guess it, it's up to their interpretation. But uh, you, you'll you hear tree knots here. You'll hear owl, owl mimics. You'll hear a, a turkey call at midnight, you know, or at one in the morning. Everybody knows turkeys are asleep when the sun goes down. You don't hear, you don't hear hens uh, chirping at midnight or one in the morning. Or you don't hear a, uh, a morning dove holler uh, after uh, 10 p.m. and before 3 a.m., you know. Uh, it's, it's those sounds that I listen for that may be natural sounds, but they're out of context or they're out of time. You know, if you're if you're eating dinner at 1130 and you hear an owl hoot, you know, that that's that's not normal because an owl is out at night. And uh, there's things like that that goes on. Joe, have you ever, speaking of sounds that maybe don't belong in a certain area, have you ever heard sounds that really don't belong in your area, like totally out of context for the woods? Yes, I heard, I've heard so uh, things in the woods that sound like a lion roaring, you know, oh, uh, it, it sounds like, oh, uh, you listen, you listen to, uh, uh, horror movies or or you listen to uh, animal uh, uh, documentaries where uh, you hear just this loud roar it sounds kind of like an alligator growling I, I know what that sounds like like an alligator will will growl and make the water vibrate it's a real deep guttural growl and I've heard I've heard that in the woods uh, a lot of times and not find nothing or have anything that uh, that I can associate it with. And uh, to me, that uh, if you look at it in a uh, Sasquatch context, that's an animal that's that's hid 
that you're getting too close and he's like, you know, back off. I'm, I'm here. Uh, you know, and it's just like a, with a dog or, or any other animal, if uh, you get close and it gets uncomfortable, he's going to let you know, or she's going to let you know, listen, back off or you're in my space. But uh, I've heard, I've heard things like that. Uh, I've also heard, uh, oh, I live, I live within five miles of two different watersheds. And the nearest watershed is about a mile and an eighth straight behind me through a, a cow pasture. And it's within line of, a uh, uh, line of sights. Oh, uh, down there sometimes you will hear something holler. It starts out like a wah and it ends up in a howl. And I can't, I can't, oh, uh, I can't uh, mimic that because I don't think my vocal cords are made to do that. But uh, after it does that, the coyotes uh, will kick in and they will, they will stir up and then all of the dogs in the neighborhood will be quiet. And uh, you'll hear a little while later, it may be an hour, hour and a half later, uh, you'll hear a, a loud wail and uh, followed by a whoop, and then all the dogs in the neighborhood go crazy. Mm. And uh, you know this is this is happening after 10 p.m. Uh, I'm uh, sitting outside sometimes from from six in the evening by my fire up to one two in the morning, and uh, this is this is all happening uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, when, you know, uh, there be some nights when, uh, for example, uh, a week and a half ago, we, oh, I was outside and you heard every cow in the, in the area seem like they were uh, moaning or uh, mooing and lowing. And there was something hollering in the, in the woods north of me. And uh, in that direction, there's not any cows for about five miles. But it sounded like a bull got his testicles hung on barbed wire, and it was loud, you know. Uh, and I uh, had uh, my younger son's like, "What is that?" I said, "I don't know, but I'm not going in the, in the woods to find out because whatever that is is either hurt or he's baiting somebody to come in and check on a bull that's hurt. So I we we leaving that alone." Yes, yeah, that's a good call. I, I'm not gonna go near any creature that's that's having a a bad day like that for sure, or anyone that's uh, pretending to. But have you ever talked to your neighbors about uh, to see if they've had issues on their property as well? Yeah, um, I actually run a uh, run a uh, dog kennels for uh, a uh, dog trainer, and uh, he, his family owns like. I, I guess probably 3,000 acres within the family around uh, that part of the uh, of the county. And it's just uh, the property starts across the road from me and goes goes north and west, if that makes sense. And uh, he's got a first cousin uh, that uh, when uh, I, I first started working for him, uh, he saw the, uh, the decal of Sasquatch in my phone number that says, if you see me, call me on the back of my truck and he, he was asking me about that. He's like, you believe in that? I was like, yeah, why? You don't believe in that? He said, I don't know. I said, well, uh, they, they're around here. And he said, well, I've never seen one. He said, but my son and a uh, guy in the tree stand when he was 30 years old and about eight in the morning, he called me up with his cell phone and said, Daddy, I need you to bring your gun and get a get in your truck and drive down here and get me. And it was only about 200 or uh, 300 yards from the back porch, they said. And he laughed at him. He said, uh, why in the world do you need me to do that? You ain't no kid. Walk back up here. He said, no, Daddy, there's something in these woods. He said, it's shaking trees and I ain't coming down. He said, I'm afraid to uh, come down. He said, uh, Oh, he went down there and got him, said he didn't hear nothing, didn't see nothing. But uh, on the way back, there was a, a small tree that was pushed over the uh, the uh, cattle trail that he drove down to get down there. And uh, said that uh, they had to get out and uh, 
and uh, move the tree with the uh, hook the winch up to the truck and move the tree so they could get out. And uh, he just drove down through there and they heard the tree fall. Uh, his first cousin is deceased now, but uh, he uh, his property is just across the road from me. And he uh, he was uh, he's a was a, a lifelong farmer and he raised soybeans and cotton and corn. And uh, he has a, a section of his uh, property. He uh, he raises and breaks horses. And uh, he has a place that he is cutting hay. And uh, he used to cut hay up at uh, up uh, till eleven or twelve at night. And uh, and uh, my boss was telling me that he was down there one night, and uh, he heard something scream at, at him. It was loud enough that he was driving a a, a tractor, a no cab tractor with the uh, uh, bush hog on the back, and he heard it scream, and he he uh, cut the. Uh, the motor down and stopped and listened uh, to it for a little while and it uh, gave him the creeps. So he cut his, uh, he, he uh, uh, drove his tractor up to his truck that was in the uh, field or his part in the field and left the tractor there, got in his truck and left. So uh, the next day, the uh, tractor and the, uh, the uh, bush hog was uh, flipped upside down. And the uh, uh, bush hog was still uh, connected to the tractor. And uh, this was a, a, a Ford tractor uh, and uh, had a six foot uh, bush hog on the back of it where they were uh, they were clearing that property out. So, uh, it had been dry that night. There wasn't any rain. It was on flat ground. There's no reason why that thing should have been upside down. But it had been upside down so long that all the oil and gas and everything had uh, leaked out into uh, onto the ground. And uh, he quit. Uh, he quit uh, uh, doing any bush hogging or uh, or cutting hay after uh, dark. Uh, after that. And uh, wow. And I got another neighbor up here that I talked to, and uh, he lives. Uh, he lives about a quarter mile from me, and. Uh, He's a he's a uh, special needs uh, guy. He's he's probably uh, fifty five years old. He's lived with his mom his whole life and everything. She died, uh, and he lives by himself. But uh, I was talking with him one day, uh, taking him to the store and stuff, and uh, he seen that decal on the back of my uh, truck, and he said. Uh, you know, people think I'm crazy uh, because I I think buggers are in the woods. He said, but I hear them out here all the time. And, uh, you know, I don't, I said, well, if you want to talk about it, tell me about it. He's like, well, they really, I don't know what to tell you. And he told me about another neighbor had some sheep that, uh, that, uh, something would get the sheep or uh, uh, every now and then when the, when the uh, sheep would lamb, uh, they uh, might have uh, one or two a year that would come up missing and, uh, there's a hog farm he knew about uh, down in Hatchie Bottom, uh, up there about uh, five miles from our house. That uh, it's got a hog farm that uh, they he said they would come up missing and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, there's people around here know about it, and I, I've been down here about four or five years, and I'm starting to meet enough people, and they get to know me enough that they open up a little bit about it. I Man, when I first moved down here, wasn't nobody saying nothing. Uh, uh, my landlord say, well, I guess something's out. And I'd be like, what do you mean? She's like, well, something's in the woods, uh, I guess. Uh, you hear it moving around. And uh, I've actually found a place up there behind her house where uh, there's a tree twist where if I was eight foot tall and I walked up and stood right there uh, uh, and looked at her house, I could see right inside her storm door in her back uh, in, in the back of her house and, or watch anything that goes on on her back porch. So I took her down there and showed her that, and she's like, yeah, well, I'm not getting out after dark no more. But uh, it's, it's definitely uh, stuff that goes on around here. Wow, Joe, that that's it's even more wild when you hear that it's not just your area, but it's also your neighbors around your area as well are, are having the same or similar things uh, go on. My goodness, have you, you know, over the years, I'm sure you've observed a lot, you've heard a lot. Um, 
do you get the feeling that you're dealing with creatures that are uh, more, let's say, um, they have a uh, positive intent or they have a negative intent towards humans? I think they have a neutral intent. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, uh, for me and you, a, a starling or a uh, or a jackdaw or a blue jay, they're not on our uh, on our uh, food uh, uh, list, you know, our grocery list. So if they fly around, we don't pay attention to them. You know, if they're doing something uh, odd that we think is interesting, we might sit there and watch them for a minute and be like, hmm, okay, that's funny and go on. Well, I think these things look at us like that in a certain extent where, you know, we're – we're not necessarily on the food chain, but if they say something interesting and they're boring and, and you're doing something, say you're cutting grass or you're outside splitting wood or weed eating or whatever, and they're bored, they're like, oh, that's interesting. Let's see what they do. And uh, then they go about their own business. Uh, I, I I get a lot of people who uh, have this uh the accelerated sense of importance that we are to uh, these creatures. Uh, they think, oh, well, uh, I, they did this. It must be because of something I did. Now, it's probably something that they did, and you just happened to be there. Um, for example, I had a guy a few years back that called me, and he was adamant that uh, Sasquatch was harassing them, trying to get in their house. So, uh, he was upset. He was he was scared. He was past upset. His wife was about ready to leave. She's like, "Listen, I might love you, but when uh, when our marriage vow said for better or worse, it didn't say it's going to be this bad, you know." And uh, so uh, uh, they had just moved in uh, their property uh, down in uh, central Alabama, and they put all their money in it. They didn't have the money to move. Uh, they was a, a younger couple. Uh, and uh, they had, uh, I think, uh, two kids and one on the way, or she just had had the new one at that time. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, so he said, just come down here and uh, and see what we uh, what we got going on. He said they're trying to get in the house. They're trying to tear up the roof, and it it's driving us crazy. I said, well, okay, I'll come down there. So I come, I, I drove down there that uh, next uh, weekend, and uh, my boys was at their uh, mom's that whole weekend, so I stayed down there that weekend in his barn. Uh, I said, listen, here's what I'm going to do. Y'all y'all do y'all's normal thing. I'm going to come out here in this barn. I said, it's, uh, it's September. It's not really cold. you got a hayloft up there that's warm. That's fine. I'm going to leave the door open on the hayloft, and I'm going to sit here and listen, and we're going to see what's going on. He said, man, I don't know if you want to stay in that uh, in that hay barn. I said, well, if they crawl up in there and haul you off. I said, well, then, uh, you know, they got me, and they didn't get y'all, and y'all were okay. And I said, but, oh. Uh, it, it may sound crazy, but that's that's something I I'll do just because I I think it uh, what you're what you're uh, comprehending and interpreting it may be a little bit different than what's going on. Well, to make a, a long story short, uh, there was a group of four uh, juvenile or pre-adult Sasquatch. I don't know if they were all male or all or all female or all mixed, but they were uh, I, they were they were adolescents. All right, one, one would come up to the tree line, and he would holler real loud to see if he could get a reaction out of uh, the house. All right. Well, then another one. Oh, uh, and I, I watched this. Another one would run. Uh, would, after he hollered and they didn't get a reaction, he uh, another one ran around to the back side of the house and screamed closer to the house. And it was almost like, well, I'm going to outdo him, see if I can get something stirred up over here. Well, uh, after that, they went and uh, uh, the guy called me on the phone. I was in his, I was in his uh, barn and I had my phone on a vibrate and he called and he's like, they're here. I said, yeah, I know. I'm watching them. He's, I said, you're good. These are, these are uh, juveniles. Oh, uh, and uh, another, oh, uh, uh, Juvenile uh, went up close and threw a, 
a good sized rock and hit the top of his uh, metal roof. He had a steel, a uh, corrugated uh, steel uh, roof on the house, and it banged uh, real loud. And you heard the rock roll down from the from the barn. And I was on the phone with him. I was like, listen, uh, this isn't anything aggressive. He's like, man, they're tearing up the house. I said, no, they're they're doing annex. I said, and uh, after that, the, uh, another one was sitting there, and uh, and the guy opened up the door looking out uh, because I told him it was uh, juveniles. He was trying to see them. Well, he opened up the door and looked out, and, that, and they squatted down at the tree line. And the tree line was about, uh, I guess, 80 feet 60 feet maybe from his uh, front door across uh, across the uh, gravel road and uh he was uh, looking and he didn't see him he's like i don't see him nowhere i said well they're squatted down in the in the grass right now oh i had uh, binoculars i was watching them with and i said listen you close the front door just leave them alone they'll be okay oh uh, well when he closed the front door uh, another one run up uh, on the on the side of the house and slapped it just <clears throat> like that right there, and uh, he'd listen in on on the house to see if he heard any movement. When he didn't hear any movement, he moved around uh, a little bit uh, uh, to the left and he slapped the house again. And apparently he heard movement because it it looked like he got uh, he got tickled and he run back to the uh, woods. And uh, you can see them uh, all had their heads together. It's almost like they were whispering, "Yeah, here's what happened. This what you know." It looked like a it looked like a bunch of uh, juvenile high school boys pulling pranks, and it was it was would have been comical if it wasn't if it was uh, humans, in other words. But for these things, what they do and uh, what they uh, so the reason why they do it, it's not the same as why we do. You know, they could very well have been saying, well, we if we do something else, we might get one of them out here and snatch it up and leave. I don't know what they're thinking, but I just know what I watched. So when uh, that uh, when that didn't get nobody out, uh, another one run down and jumped up on the porch and uh, and uh, slapped a, a porch with both of his hands. Just went, uh, jumped on the porch and made a pop and uh, with his feet when he landed. And then he uh, bent over just like a grill and slapped the, slapped the floorboards. And uh, I was talking to the guy, and you could hear the windows rattle. And I was like, "Listen, this, uh, these, I know this is scary for you." You think this is the same uh, booger doing this, but this is a group of younger boogers that ain't got nothing to do but get in trouble. I said, so we can we can deal with this. And uh, so uh, the last one, uh, when that didn't get any uh, response, went around and shut the door. Uh, he grabbed the door hand, uh, the doorknob, and, and shook it. Uh, and then he went around to the back door and did the same thing. Well, that guy liked to come and glued then. He's like, I'm going to get my gun. I'm going to start shooting. He's like, no, listen, we're going to fix this. I'm watching this. They don't, they're, they're mischievous. They're, uh, they're, uh, being, uh, aggravating, but they're not being hostile. we we don't need to go. Uh, we take care of this. And so, uh, uh, when they uh, went around, they uh, they stopped uh, and watched, and nothing. No, he didn't come outside, so uh, they sat still. And uh, then uh, when they realized that they couldn't get nothing uh, stirred up at the house, they all come down towards the barn because there was livestock in the barn. Uh, he had some goats down there and some chickens, and they was in the in the uh, barn. Well, when they come down there. Uh, they come walking down the tree line and uh, they got past the where I couldn't see out the hayloft, but I could hear them. And they come around to the back and there wasn't an opening in the hayloft uh, up there. I couldn't look out back there. And uh, there's, there was a breezeway where you pull a tractor uh, into the barn and you go out the back and that was open. And uh, they come in there and start uh, uh, moving around and uh, looking at stuff and I racked a I racked a uh, shell into my shotgun. I said, all right, if y'all don't get out of here, I'm gonna tell y'all's daddy on y'all. And I hollered it as loud as I could. And you would have thought that they had uh, tore down the side of that dog. 
barn trying to get out of there. They didn't know I was there, and it scared them. And oh, it was almost like teenage kids that got caught. And it was like, well, I'm going to tell your daddy, okay, well, daddy don't know we're here. We better get gone, you know. And so uh, uh, they didn't come back the rest of that night. They didn't come back that next night. They didn't come back uh, Monday night whenever uh, uh, he called me and let me know. I said, well, they'll be back, but this this here is how you deal with that. And uh, so uh, – Whenever uh, they come back at our uh, next Tuesday night, they were just uh, hooping and hollering in the woods, and uh, he'd call me on the phone. He's like, "Well, they're out here hooping again." I said, "Well, uh, they're just they're just uh, feeling their oats, I guess. Just go out there and tell them to shut up. You're trying to sleep. Holler at them." I said, "They see you as the alpha male. They're trying to see how far they can push you until you react uh, to a way that." Uh, they're not alpha animals or else they would have come in the door. Whenever uh, you whenever you go out there and they run off, they're not shaking that door to uh, to get in the house. They're shaking that door to get a rise out of you. And uh, so uh, over the process of the next uh, couple of months, it didn't go away uh, easy, but he would go out there whenever they uh, – they would uh, start their stuff, and he would holler at them, say, "Listen, y'all, be quiet. I got kids in here. You you scaring the kids, you know." And after a while, they got to where you know, okay, we know what he's going to do. It's going to be one time, and he's not coming out no more. And then they 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 kind of left him alone. But they still mess with stuff, take stuff out of the yard, but uh, they would always return it. And it's just like uh, with people, if you and I are together and I've got a, a nice hunting rifle and I set it up next to a tree and I, I go around and use the bathroom in the, in the bushes, you know that I set that gun down and I'm coming back to get it. That's my gun. It's, as far as me and you is concerned, that's my gun. Well, with them, if I set that gun down and I walk off and uh, I go use the bathroom, I'm through with that gun. It's whoever's can, whoever can get its gun at that point. And uh, in, in that way, I don't think they understand the, uh, the uh, civilized uh, version of uh, owning property. It's, uh, it's whoever's, uh, ain't, uh, whoever's got it when they're through with it, they set it down to walk it off and leave it. And uh, whoever comes along and needs it or wants it, they pick it up and take it out. And uh, that that in itself causes a lot of uh, conflict in uh, in uh, messing with these animals as far as dealing with them on a daily basis. That that's that is incredible. And it sounds like you you were able to really have some time looking at these creatures as they were running around messing with the house, all that good stuff. Are you able to, to, to kind of describe what, what they actually uh, looked like, what, what you saw? Was it similar to, you know, what everyone says, or did you notice some things that may have been different than the normal? Oh, well, in different parts of the country, they look a little bit different. They don't look like Patty down here in the South. Uh, you see that uh, at Patterson Gimlin uh, uh, tape where Patty's walking across that creek bed and turns around and looks at you. Uh, that may be what they look like uh, in the Pacific Northwest, and I've seen I've seen some that look similar to that in uh, uh, Texas. But down here, they look more like a mix between a uh, uh, Down syndrome uh, uh, chimpanzee and. Uh, I guess a, a bonobo mix, uh, and they're they're pretty aggressive if you don't know how to handle them. But uh, they're not always they're not just so aggressive that they're uh, territorial because you're there. They're gonna run you out. Like oh, some some of them uh, do that, but that's usually the ones that's been shot at and things. Um, but if you if you want a good mental uh, picture of of what one looks like, uh, you. Uh, Take take a uh, a chimpanzee and stretch stretches a uh, body of uh, proportions out uh, to about six and a half seven foot tall uh, for a juvenile a foot and a half uh, 
a two foot taller or down here for a male or adult male. And there is a sexual dimorphism in them in that the females are shorter than the males. Uh, an adult female don't get much uh, bigger than a uh, than a uh, early young adult male, and uh, the forehead, the uh, brow is really pronounced. It it comes out uh, uh, from a sloped forehead, uh, and the uh, eyebrows are almost uh, almost uh, protruding enough that you think, oh, that ought to make a natural shade for them, you know. Uh, and that's why a lot of people think they see them with black eyes. It's because their eyes are inset so far that there's a, a permanent shadow on there. Um, the nose is flatter than a human's. It's a hooded nose, but it is wide. Uh, uh, it is uh, got the nostrils pointed down. Uh, some of them are pointed out, and I think that may just be a uh, individual variance in the same species, but. Uh, most of them down here is the uh, nose is a hooded that's pointed down. There's a, a, a long, a longer upper lip than humans have. And then the mouth is wider. It's almost like, it's almost like you uh, see those cartoon uh, clowns when they smile and their uh, mouth uh, stretches real wide to their ears. Uh, their mouth is like that. Uh, their teeth is like humans, but they're like this, uh, they're, they're huge. Um, the incisors are probably, I don't know, the size of a, a well, a square chewing gum. I mean, it, it's it's that wide. And uh, I, I don't ever notice, oh, they have canines, but I don't see, like, any massive uh, canines like you would see on a baboon or nothing out of these here. They're pretty much like human teeth, but on a bigger uh, scale. Uh, their jaws are all wide and uh, and uh, thick. You can tell there's a lot of uh, muscles and uh, and bone mass in their jaw. They must have a really strong bite force. Uh, they got a neck, but their trap muscles are so big that it's like it's like their neck is uh, is hid behind their trap muscles on their back. Um, they're not all that. Uh, people say there's an hourglass shape to them. I'm pretty sure some of them have, but all these down here have like a, a gorilla type body. Uh, uh, you don't have these uh, massive uh, uh, arms and then uh, a little bitty legs or nothing like that, but uh, their arms are longer than their legs. Uh, I think I think that uh, when they're uh, young, and I, I've got uh, places I've seen that support this, that they live in the trees more than on ground. I don't think they come down on the ground a lot until they're at least five, six feet tall. And uh, I've got a friend of mine that has a uh, uh, what I call a Sasquatch nursery in his uh, yard or uh, in his uh, hunting area back there behind his yard. And uh, there's a tree that is... Uh, I guess uh, 80 or 85 feet tall. It's a it's a, a giant pine tree on the uh, side away from the road. Uh, you can see where something over over uh, generations uh, animals have slid down the side of that tree, and that bark is completely slick. On the other side, facing the road, the bark looks normal, but you can tell it looks like something uh, slid down the side of that tree. And there are uh, trees that are pushed over for the younger ones to learn to crawl and to climb on. And uh, I've always uh, uh, hypothesized that the reason when you see a Sasquatch walk and he's walking in a straight line as opposed to waddling like humans is, is because he, uh, he learned to walk on uh, tree limbs and uh, they had to balance like that. Well, after they uh, get uh, big enough, they get on the ground and I can't net and hurt them. They still walk like that because that's how they learned. And uh, that's uh, that would make sense. That makes sense to me because I've, I've seen little ones up in the tree, and uh, the only time that I've seen them come down is when the mom has been there and said, "Come on." Sure, that yeah. makes sense. The similarities how you talked about the similarities between them and the chimpanzees, but that stretched out is, is really, 
it's such an interesting mental picture and, and not really the most comforting one, to be honest. But do you think, you know, if you look into chimpanzees, their behavior sometimes can be just quite vicious and they will just tear things apart. Uh, do, do you, right. Have there been time, I'm sure you've been around a lot of times where there's been Sasquatch that have been hostile environments as well. Have you seen those kind of same behaviors in uh, Sasquatch where, you know, the chimpanzees are acting in a negative way or. I, I've seen, I've seen where they do that. And I think what you're getting at is though, uh, they, they act uncivilized. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's why it, uh, that's why it, uh, you know, these people run around and say, oh, these are, these are forest uh, people that are gentle and they love nature and they, they want to be your friends. They're going to protect you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, you, you only hear stories from the people who, uh, who uh, were helped out of the woods. You don't hear stories about the people who, who, uh, walked up on one that was having a bad day, got pissed off, ripped them up, made them and left, you know, uh, you, it's just like, uh, just like with dolphins, people, people for centuries said, well, dolphins will help a, a sailor get back to the shore. Well, you don't know about the dolphins that, the, uh, that took the sailor and pushed him out farther to sea. Cause there's no, nobody there left to tell that story. And these are kind of like the same way, you know, uh, if, if they were, a type man, they would be more terrifying than if they were just another primate. Mm. And the reason why I say that, men don't don't have an idea of of forgiveness. They don't have an idea of uh, of uh, you know I I'll accept you like this. So humans, if they don't know what something is as a species, we kill it because we ain't gonna deal with it. And we ain't gonna learn about it. You know, but if they were another type man, they would have that same type of uh, thinking too. And uh, the fact that they they live off a of natural law, uh, just like the gorillas and stuff that I watch on TV do, that tells me that they're a primate. Uh, people say, well, no, it's, it can't be just a primate. Well, humans are just primates. I mean, Oh, uh, on a scientific level, we are a primate. But if you take a uh, Sasquatch and if you take a gorilla and you take an orangutan and you take a bonobo and you take a billy ape and you take a man and you set them in a circle, all of, all of those animals live on land. All right. One of those animals don't fit because one of those animals isn't adapted to uh, living on land. That animal doesn't have the uh, strength to to live without uh, without uh, having to manipulate its environment so it can. It don't have the ability to eat raw food, uh, just getting it and eating it without having to process it so its uh, body can digest it. And it doesn't have the ability to stay out in the weather without having to uh, manipulate textiles and stuff to survive. And that that person is man, okay? Uh, we don't belong. And uh, people say, well, the government don't want to talk about uh, Bigfoot and Sasquatch and all these things because, and they'll they'll fill in any any reason that is uh, that is convenient for them. My thinking on that is the reason why they don't talk about it is they've got, oh, uh, if, if they look at evolution. Oh, and they start with the rhesus monkey and go up that uh, chain uh, to where modern man is on that rise of man chart. I think you take that rise of man chart and take the modern human out and put a Sasquatch where he is. That would be the most uh, evolved uh, terrestrial primate on Earth, okay? If, uh, uh, and the reason why I say that, when you look at the at the evolution of that uh, of the uh, species, it starts out small and gets bigger. Well, when uh, you get the Neanderthals, and then uh, uh, they're our size now, and then uh, that uh, that uh, 
other one, uh, trying to think of that. Anyway, he was six and a half foot tall. Oh, uh, it, we, we didn't evolve from a six and a half foot tall, uh, uh, archaic man down to a five and a half to six foot tall modern man. That didn't work. So, uh, the natural uh, rise of that would mean it would be a seven and a half to eight foot tall primates, which would be Sasquatch. Okay, well, if you if you uh, if you can sit there and, and look at that with a uh, with a clear mind and an open mind and say, well, okay, well, where does humans come into this? All right, every every culture we've we've got uh, uh, associated with a modern man says we were created. It didn't say we evolved. Uh, every one of them said God created us in one way or another. So, oh. Uh, Maybe that was my, oh, oh, maybe that was my, the early modern man that didn't understand science's way of saying, okay, we're not, we're not from here. All right. Well, then where are we from? That's a whole new uh, can of worms. You know, if, uh, if, uh, they just come out and said, okay, well, we were a genetically engineered, uh, animal that they, oh, uh, oh, uh, people say that, uh, oh, uh, Sasquatch has our DNA. What if we've got Sasquatch's DNA? You know, it, it's human. It's human arrogance that says that we are the top person, and they've got to have our DNA. Well, uh, what if what they call God come and seen the uh, the uh, possibilities of what uh, Sasquatch and these uh, terrestrial apes could be? They added DNA to it, and they made uh, they made a modern man. And maybe you know, and there's all kind, and there's all kind of crazy, uh, crazy theories about uh, the Sumerians and Anunnakis and stuff. I don't know if I'll go along with all that, uh, uh, but it it's something to think about. Uh, maybe the reason why they don't want to uh, acknowledge that is they've got to do, they've got to uh, say where humans come from in that. Because a human, we are really developed to be a semi-aquatic. Uh, if you look at uh, at all those other apes I talked about, uh, they've got a lot of hair on their body. Okay, they can't swim good because they they have all kind of a uh, uh, drag off of that hair. You know, uh, gorillas and uh, apes and stuff they don't have fat uh, deposits like we do to help them float. They'll sink to the bottom and drown. Uh, we've got less hair follicles per square inch than even a dolphin or uh, or whale has. You know, and they're aquatic mammals. All right, we've got uh, we've got a uh, webbed finger ne- uh, fingers and toes. The uh, apes don't have that. We've got a uh, we've got the diving syndrome, just like a whale, where if uh, if you uh, swim and you dive down so far, your your throat locks up and you don't uh, you don't uh, need to breathe until your body runs out of oxygen. Then you got to come up. You know. Uh, and uh, that's not even talking about the uh, the size to strength ratio. The human body is not as strong as any other uh, uh, terrestrial ape's body because it's designed to be held up with uh, some medium like water or something like that. And that's the reason why we float. That's the reason why uh, we've got a hooded nose to keep uh, water out of our nose. Uh, so we don't inhale it. You know, there's a lot of stuff there that, and I'm going out on a tangent, I know, but there's a, there's a lot of stuff there that, uh, I, I look at and I think about, and, uh, if, if everybody uh, just said, okay, they're real. And they, they said, all right, where's people come from? That would, that would kill civilization. And I say all that to say, that uh, they do, they do do things like that. You know, I, uh, they hit an animal, uh, they catch it, they rip its legs off and eat it before it's uh, dead. Uh, they, uh, I, I sat down there on Natchez Trace and watched eleven uh, Sasquatch uh, one night uh, kill three deer, and it was like something out of uh, out of uh, nature uh, documentary or something. I thought, wow. There's no way, but, uh, you know, there's stuff like that, that, uh, I don't know why it's not filmed in America because, uh, 
it's happening there. I mean, I wasn't looking for it. I just happened to be down there in a place where it was quiet and there was a, there was a campground that nobody goes to on the trace. And I pulled down there just to uh, see if I could hear anything. And that was something that just happened that night. And, uh, because I was interested in it, I wasn't afraid. It wasn't until I got back home and I thought, well, it's a good thing those deer didn't show up. Well, I was the only other thing there. Now, I'm not the most familiar with the geography in that area. So that is in Mississippi as well? Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, there's a, there's a Natchez Trace runs from Natchez, uh, Mississippi, north to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, at, at one time, that was the only trade route. And at one time, there was a, a northern route and a southern route that, that were divided, though. But, uh, yeah, Natchez Trace uh, Na- is a national park now that uh, you can drive down and you can stop. And they've got different markers and stuff that tells places uh, where uh, things in history happened. And you can go and eat there. You can walk around. It's got horse trails, nature trails and stuff like that. And I was at a campground uh, that uh, – as far as I know, I'm the only one that's been down there in the last five years. And I've taken my boys down there and let them, let them when they were younger, listen to, uh, uh to Sasquatch holler in the back of the truck. And, uh, that was just one of my uh, places I went and, uh, listened. And the ones that you saw tear that, that deer apart, do you think they're probably more adults then or? or juveniles yeah i think they were adults that caught it here here's what happened i was parked facing the trace and there was this i guess about a, a six acre clearing there was there was uh trees uh, lined up the trace and then there was that clearing and then the road that uh that goes to the campground uh, uh, come to the back side of that clearing and then you go to the campground. So I was parked over there uh, uh, with my truck towards the road and I had my windows down. It was uh, it was in December and it was kind of cool, but it, uh, I was listening and uh, it, there wasn't any sounds anywhere. Uh, you, you didn't hear nothing. And uh, I was there about 30 minutes and uh, I heard uh, something coming through the woods and I looked, I looked over in time to see uh, three does run out of the trees to the south, and one was going so fast looking back, it actually run into the uh, back uh, bumper of my truck. And the other two uh, went around, and uh, they went in, the, uh, went in that opening. Well, when they went out in the opening, uh, they turned to go to the west towards uh, Natchez, or the east going towards Natchez Trace. And uh, two uh, Sasquatch come out come out in the uh, the open there, and in the tree line, out about uh, uh, four or five yards enough for them to stand there. And the, uh, they were obvious to the deer. So the deer stopped there, and they cut down to the uh, west, going towards the river. And there was three that come out of the campground over there. Oh. Uh, well, uh, when uh, when they saw them, uh, they cut to the north, and at the very end of the uh, of the tree line up there, at the end, there was uh, two that come out there, and uh, when uh, they come out, the deers just basically started circling around, and and uh, uh, I heard something coming in the woods, and there was uh, four of them come through the woods, and like they'd been the ones that were pushing the deer, and. Uh, Oh, they come around. They didn't even act like oh, my truck was there. They did, They couldn't care less if I was there or not. And they come out through there, and they started. Uh, they started uh, uh, jumping at those deers and, and growling and hollering. And and the deers, uh, they get scared and they'd run one way, and they'd let them run enough that uh, uh, while they were running one way, the uh, ones behind them were walking up. Uh, uh, closing in the gap and the other ones ahead would holler at them and they'd turn uh, 90 degrees and run another way and then they would come up and they were they were just they were just closing it in on them well when they got to where that uh they couldn't get get away and i, I and it wasn't a a small space that that happened you would you would think they would huddle them in until they could all touch each other but that wasn't how they worked they got they were probably 
15, 20 yards from each other, but they were around these deers. And then this uh, one come out of the tree and busted through the line just like it was a uh, uh, a hog dog hitting a hog on the uh, when it was baited up by dogs. And it hit it hit the uh, the deer on the right side and knocked it down just like he tackled it and reached over and grabbed his head and popped down and around. And when he did that, the other ones uh, just piled in on these other two deer. And it was, it was a gory uh, uh, sound of bones popping. You could hear uh, a couple of bleats out of the deer, but that didn't last long. And you heard deer popping, you heard skin ripping, uh, and you heard them growling. It sound it sound like dead gum uh, uh, lion sitting there eating. I mean, there was growling. There wasn't any fighting over the food. So uh, the big one when he uh, when he killed his, he ripped off a back leg, and uh, he handed it to a smaller one. Uh, and by smaller, I say six and a half feet tall, probably. He, he might not been quite that big, but or I don't even know if it's a male or not, but he killed his and he tore his up and handed his out. And then the others that had killed those other deer took their piece and, and uh, shared that deer around. And uh, they eat off of three deer and it was completely gone within probably from start to finish, probably 45 minutes from the time they ringed them up uh, coming out of the woods until they uh, they tore them apart and sat there and eat them. And then they just they just uh, walked off like it was every day or Sunday meeting and they they just went about the business. You know, I, it's like I wasn't even there. That is absolutely incredible. So you're saying that the whole time it was about 45 minutes and you were, you were there present for like the whole thing. Yes. I sat in my truck. There ain't no way I was getting out. No, definitely <laughs> not. No. I, I had my windows down and I was hoping that they wouldn't notice my windows down with us. When that, uh, when them four come out of the woods, uh, three of them went in front of my truck and one went behind me and it was just like they were going around rock. It was, they, they didn't look in my windshield. They, they were focused on those deers. They were, they didn't care that I was there. I wasn't making any noise. I wasn't moving around. I wasn't disturbing their hunt. And they didn't care that I was there. That's the thing. I, I, I was insignificant in their world at that time. And when they ate, they didn't look over and see if uh, Joe was still watching them. They care less. Oh, uh, they moved right on, right on uh, their business wherever they went. They, uh, they headed out north. And uh, that's the last time I saw him that night. That is, that's, that's wild, Joe. Did the adult ones look like chimps as well, or did they look a little uh, different than how the, the juveniles would look? The adults looked uh, like chimps, yes, but they looked more uh, uh, thick as far as, uh, you know, the difference in seeing a gangly teenager and an adult male? A human. All right. Oh, uh, that. Oh, uh, that is a good comparison. To, uh, you could tell they were the same animal. They were the same sex, but the maturity was there. It, uh, they didn't look like bodybuilders. So they looked like big. Uh, co- so sort of like the uh, Caesar on uh, the Planet of the Apes uh, when he stood up, and you could tell. You know, he was a. He was a. Uh, adult male. I kind of wonder after watching uh, Planet of the Apes if uh, somebody didn't know how Sasquatch acts when they did that movie because there was a lot of similarities in how they acted with uh, what I've seen uh, in my experiences. Now, I'm looking at a map and I, I believe I'm looking at the right Natchez Trace State Park and Forest in Mississippi. If you go north, and right. it, it almost... Uh, if you were to go north, you'd almost get into Kentucky Lake, which would also get into land between the lakes, which is right. Do you think oh, there could be bottoms. a connection? Oh, uh, well, sure. I think there's always that possibility here. Uh, when you look at Natchez Trace, uh, you come through uh, Colbert County, uh, Alabama, 
and you head into Tishmingo County, uh, Mississippi, right there on that uh, border, on that state line is uh, is Bear Creek uh, Campground. That's where I'm talking about. That was, uh, but all up and down Natchez Trace. When I when I first moved back up here after Hurricane uh, Rita, and I started going looking for me places to see if they were up here too. It was like it was like I was in a a school for for hunting uh, Sasquatch. It's like man, they've got to be everywhere, or I've got to be crazy. But I've got to figure out which one it is because there's there's signs all over the place, especially after the trees fall and you get to looking oh, through the woods and you you can see like tree structures and stuff that's there, and those are boundary markers. Uh, I was I was over there. Uh, uh, down the road a little bit from from uh, Bear Creek uh, campgrounds, so right across the uh, state line in Mississippi, there's an Indian mound right there, and uh, you can stand on top of that Indian mound and look up down Bear Creek in the winter time when there ain't no trees and look around. Uh, I was sitting over there. There's a nursery down there too, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't suggest going around there. Oh. Uh, if you're just curious, because you get all oh, they get aggressive down there. But I was watching for uh, some Sasquatch to come out of, out of the uh, east. Uh, on the east, over about 10 miles from that place, is Freedom Hills uh, uh, Wildlife Management Area in uh, Colbert County, and they're pretty aggressive over in there. Anyway, I was watching for uh, some maybe to come out there. And I heard something behind me, and there was one crawling up uh, on the tree line coming around. And uh, he got pissed off because I caught him watching me because I heard him, and I walked over to the other side. And uh, he he was a good nine foot tall, I guess, a uh, thick thick fella. His you couldn't know uh, his head was so big you couldn't put a five gallon bucket down on it if that makes sense. And uh, uh-huh. he he sat there and watched me, and he. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of times they watch to see if uh, if uh, how you act uh, to determine how they react. I never act like I'm scared. Uh, my my personality is if I'm curious or should be afraid, I I'm going to be uh, seeing what I can see because uh, my curiosity beats my beats out my fear. And I I admit that I, I take chances that I would I wouldn't uh, suggest anybody else do. Uh, just because I know what I can deal with and, and don't don't say, well, Joe sat here and did this, so I'm going to do that. No, Joe sat there and did that because he, he had the experience to know when it's time to get out there. There have been times when I've, I've seen one and I'm like, oh, I'm gone. And I talk to him and, and walk on out of there. But, uh, you know, that that's you got to know what you're doing. You, there's no, there's no checklist. You go down and say, well, if it does this, I can do this and be okay. Or I better not do that. Um, well, you're dealing with something wild for sure. Joe, I know last time we talked, I believe you'd said that you haven't been over, you, you go all over the place, but you hadn't gone over to Oklahoma yet. Is, is that still the case where, you know, you have uh, yet to make it over there? Over to where? Uh, Oklahoma. Uh, no, I haven't got to go to Oklahoma yet, but I went to uh, Missouri last weekend to, uh, to a uh, Mark Twain national uh, forest over there. Oh yeah. Uh, I went over and I went over and looked at some things. Uh, and, uh, I didn't, I didn't see too much, uh, Sasquatch stuff. I actually, uh, uh, put up a camp around a tree structure that, I'm not. I'm not absolutely sure that a Sasquatch made it, as opposed to maybe a hunter made a, a blind. But uh, Sasquatch ain't the only thing in the woods you got to worry about. Uh, like we, I left that over there because uh, somebody was shooting through my camp uh, three or four times, and I hollered and it didn't. Oh, uh, they didn't seem to care if I was over or not, so I packed up and left. But. Uh, you know, I, I'd rather run into a Sasquatch in the woods as another human because of Sasquatch belongs there. If you in the woods at uh, 11, 12 o'clock at night and you come across a, another human or group of humans, uh, you don't know why they're there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I agree. You know, finding a, a human in the woods uh, is you know, can be a lot scarier than a Sasquatch. So Mark Twain, from where you're, uh, well, 
let's say Mark Twain from Mississippi. That's quite a haul. Uh, is is that? Yeah, a- it was uh, four hours. It was four hours uh, from here, oh, one way. Yeah, oh, there's a little old town called Donovan, uh, Missouri, up there. Oh, uh, my son's uh, got a girlfriend up there, and he wanted to go see her for her birthday. And I like, well. While you do that, I'm going to go up here and look around. And I happened to get up there on the uh, first day of uh, antlerless uh, deer gun season. So I got up there and I, I checked in at the National Forest with the game warden, let him know where I was going to be and uh, uh, everything. And uh, he told me what nobody else going to be around there unless there were some day hunters. And, and they, they stay away from the uh, designated uh, campgrounds. So uh, I, I set up a primitive camp. I went, I went down to the end of the road uh, down there where I was, there was a turnaround. And I put my, I put my camp in the middle of that turnaround. It wasn't a, it wasn't an established camp. Uh, but uh, the game warden told me if I found a place I liked on the side of the road since uh, uh, where I was going was in a uh, area that hunters generally don't go in. He said, listen, this is the uh, first day of deer season. If you're just camping, I'd normally I tell you to be careful. He said, but people don't go in that part of the of uh, the forest. He said, you, you probably won't see maybe one or two people and there'll be locals just looking around for deer uh, spots maybe. So I went over and I set up and, uh, you know, that those woods was quiet the whole time. Uh, when I got there, uh, tell you a little bit of what I do. I, I set up my camp and I got, uh, I got out there and, uh, I walked out in the, uh, out in the woods, uh, uh, past my camp towards the river down there where it was a little bit. And I just said, listen, I've had a rough week this week. I'm tired. I come out here because y'all got a beautiful place that's quiet, and I'm out here to uh, to uh, settle down and just enjoy y'all's uh, y'all's uh, house. If y'all don't want me here, just let me know and I'll leave. I mean, I'm fine with that, but I'm I'm just out here. I'm not. I don't care about deer hunting. I'm not out here making mess. And I I even uh, when I uh, when I got through talking, I went around. I picked up garbage and burned it while I was there to uh, kind of clean it up. And I didn't have any problems out there. I I heard some uh, some uh, walking around the uh, the. Uh, camp area inside or inside the tree line now where i was you come in from the west but it was on top of a uh, hill that had about a 60 degree uh, uh incline from the bottom to the top and whatever walked around was uh, walking uphill but it would go to the road and it turned around and it walk uh, all the way back around to the other side of the road and it did that two or three times looking around and uh, i heard it uh, about 10 30 at night and there's no flashlights out there no uh oh uh, uh, motors running uh there was there wasn't anybody when i hollered out to see if anybody was there nobody held the count so i said well uh Anybody that's out there walking uh, like this, it, it's not a person. So oh, I just uh, stayed around the campfire. I didn't cook while I was in the camp. Uh, if, uh, while I was gone, I went and eat, I went and eat out because uh, I try to put as little food in the camp if I'm looking for Sasquatch as possible. And uh, there are uh, uh, black bears up there, and I didn't want to deal with that either. But uh, uh, So I cooked uh, two meals there. Oh, and that was just uh, early in the day, so I'd have them something to eat. But uh, my main meals, I'd just go into town and eat to keep from having anything. And that, that saved on having garbage and and stuff. So there's stuff like that that I've learned over the years not to do. Uh, I don't try to camp real close to a waterway. Even though I was within line of sight from the top of the hill, the waterway was a good I guess mile and a half down uh, through the uh, trees down there. You know, I was uh, on elevated uh, uh, land, so I could see down through there and see it. But I don't, I don't uh, get real close like that. I, I always try to make sure that I've got a good uh, place that uh, if anybody's going to come at me, they can only come at me from one or two, two uh, directions at the same time.
And uh, so, you know, a, a lot of that uh, is just a uh, good woodcraft. It ain't got nothing to do with Sasquatch. It's just uh, what you learn in the woods. And I've, I've been in the woods enough. I grew up in it. Uh, Daddy was a great hunter gatherer. Uh, and uh, he taught me he taught me what I know uh, up till I got grown and then I taught myself the other stuff but um, uh, you know you got to know what you're doing and if they see that you're competent and that you're you're not there to disturb things and rock the boat as they say uh, most of the time you won't even know they're observing you mm. Mm. Wise, wise words for sure. I'm going to have to keep Mark Twain on my radar because that's kind of more up near my area too, more or less. But Joe, I got I got one final question for you. It's been a pleasure chatting with you again. I thank you. But um, something I'm going to yeah, be sure. uh, asking, I'm going to be asking this from here on out just because I'm, this is kind of a out of left field one, but... <laughs> Have you ever run into reports of people seeing or experiencing what they say looks like a hyena? The hyena. A hyena. Mm, no, I haven't. I haven't heard anything like that. Oh, I think we talked about it the last time. The only thing that I have uh, run into is people talk about. Uh, dog man and i mm. i don't i've never seen one but uh, I, what i have seen is a big uh, uh bipedal animal that looks like a baboon I remember and a lot of people that, say yeah. that's gug ways mm-hmm. a lot of people say that's gug ways but when you look at a gug way the the nose looks almost like a bear on their pictures that's not what i see my what i seen look look like a uh, giant baboon no tail but uh, he was uh, his his neck and head was solid white, and it looked like somebody took a giant marquee and drew him a uh, uh, big black eyebrows. His his uh, canines were about three and a half inches long on the top of his uh, of his uh, muzzle, and the bottom ones were about an inch inch and a half shorter. And the way I know how big they were is I saw one yawn at me when I was getting up on it. Well, I, I walked up. I was coming out of the woods. So I'd been bow hunting. And uh, I'd come out of the woods. So it was it was after dark. It's like 830. I'd set up uh, way after there because I went to sleep. <laughs> and uh, so I was coming out and I heard something moving. And I've got a, a light. That's a uh, that's uh, 999 uh, uh, lumens or 999,000 lumens. So when I light it up, it, it makes everything look like a uh, daytime. And uh, you can adjust the the beam to be real bright down to it makes a little old, uh, square. And I heard something uh, in the woods, and I was walking uh, down the road, so I popped that on and shined it up there, and it was uh, it was one of these animals. The, the belly was white, too, but everything else was black. And uh, it was sitting there eating a handful of uh, green uh, pine needles. And it was holding it and chewing on it uh, on the side, just like uh, you see Bugs Bunny chewing on a uh, on a carrot on cartoons. And uh, I sat in there, and he, w- he was looking around, didn't, didn't care if I was there, got the light on him, that didn't pay attention to me. So I started walking up on him. And I got about 45 feet from him, and he, uh, he rolled his lip up like a... Uh, like a baboon to us and i stopped there a little bit and he he, he'd look at me and look down look up at me roll his lip look down and look to the side so then he uh, kept on eating so i took another uh, step or two up and then he he yawned real loud at me and huffed and uh i knew then uh he wasn't bored he was uh, nervous and so i stopped i said okay look so i'm watching you but I'm going to back off. So I backed off another 10, 15 feet backwards and still held the light on him. He didn't care. I was sitting there watching him for nothing. And I sat there and watched him for about 30 minutes. He got up and walked off on all fours just like a baboon and uh, went down towards the river. And when I made sure he wasn't going the way I was going, I cut back. He was going uh, north or uh, east, and I headed uh, south or uh, the southwest direction. I was just going to make sure he wasn't going to run up on me whenever uh, I turned that light off. So after he got gone, he didn't act like he cared if I knew he was there or not. So. Uh, I went, uh, 
I went and talked to game warden uh, the next week after that uh, down there. And uh, I, I seen him. And I just pulled up. I said, hey, uh, I want to ask you a question. He said, sure, go ahead. I said, "Is are there any large mammals besides uh, uh, black bears and uh, cougar down here that I can't shoot? And he sat there and thought a minute. He said, well, besides black bear and cougars? He said, mammals? No. He said, I said, okay. So that told me that uh, there was something, there, there could be something bigger than, uh, uh, you know, like alligators or something down there because he, he specified mammals. So he thought, said, mammals? No. So I said, all right, thanks. So I turned around and walked off. I got about uh, 10 steps from him. And he hollered at me and said, hey, come here. And I said, what? He said, why'd you ask me that question? I said, oh, no reason. I said, uh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you anyway. I said, so uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. He said, no, no. He said, just just tell me why you think that. And so I sat there and I told him about what I seen and then me sitting there watching him. He said, hey, will you come up here to the office and show me on the map where you saw him at? I said, sure. So this, so I, I found out this so game warden is a, an incoming a biologist up here. The guy who uh, who was retiring was still in the process of retiring. So he'd been there 30 or uh, something years and he was at the office up there. So he walked in and uh, after I followed him up there and we got uh, at his office and we walked in there where there's a big old map of it. And he, he called that other guy in there and he, he uh, told him, said, uh, uh, I want you to I want you to uh, hear this what we're talking about, and uh, he asked me uh, to tell the guy what I saw again, describe him and everything, and I told him what I saw, and uh, he uh, he said, "Well, where'd you see it at on the map?" And I I, I pointed on the map and I showed him, and uh, uh, that game warden told the new one told the other one said, "That's where I saw those uh, tracks at around through there." I said, yeah, there's tracks up through there now. Uh, I said, uh, uh, I'll come back tomorrow and probably uh, see if I can figure out where it come from. Uh, and he said, well, let's let's look at uh, let's look at uh, doing that sometime if you don't mind me going with you. I said, I don't mind. You know, it's it's free country, whatever. And uh, so. I showed him, and he asked the he asked the guy that was retiring. He said, "Do you know anything about this?" And he said, "Off the off, on the record, I don't know anything." He said, "But just us sitting here, uh, BSing off the record." He said, "I've seen the I've seen the tracks, but I ain't never seen the animal that makes them." And uh, so uh, we went. Uh, make a long story short, about a week and a half later. Uh, we went and uh, we're looking around uh, up through there uh, for deer. I did was looking for deer uh, along that road and he happened to come through and uh, we stopped and talked a little while. And he's like, we ain't far from where you saw those tracks. Are you? I was like, no, uh, let's go up there and see. And so we went up there and I took pictures of the track. So I had my bow with me and I put my arrow down and my bow down and took pictures of of a couple of the tracks and i think one of them i put a uh, uh, water bottle down so you get size of it but we we uh track that uh, uh foot uh trail for a mile and a, about a mile and a quarter and it disappeared and i don't know if it jumped up on a tree and swung around or what but we couldn't find it it was it went into a thicket and we couldn't we couldn't find uh any uh uh under uh undergrowth or broke down or any tr or leaves messed up or anything so i don't know uh, where it went from there but i do know that uh, uh about uh, four weeks later that whole area was tilled up made into a uh, feeding plot really oh wow that's that's really mm -hmm. interesting is i'm sure you can't share specifics about the location but is there like maybe county area or anything you can share about yeah it's a public wildlife management area oh, it uh, is. Seven, uh, seven thousand acres uh when i first started uh when i first moved down to mississippi i i always hunted on private property i got down here and i didn't uh, have any private property to hunt on so i found the uh, wildlife management area and uh so I went in and uh, talked uh, with a guy that was uh, 
uh, working down there at the time that was uh, putting out food plots and stuff. And uh, he he said, listen, if you bow hunt down here, you got 7,000 acres to yourself in this part of the uh, the." management area. And I said, why? He, he said, won't nobody go in there? He said, it's creepy. He said, I work down here and I make my, uh, I make my uh, food plots and stuff down here. He said, but I don't stay around here after uh, two or three in the afternoon because it, it creeps me out all day so much that I I can't stand in any of this area. He said, the rest of the park or the rest of the management area ain't like that. He said, it's this area. I said, that's probably because that's, uh, that's uh, something in there uh, uh, but uh, my thinking, uh, I told him, was uh, that's where I want to be because that means all the big bucks run in here hiding mm-hmm. from all the other hunters. Wow. And that's where I want to be. And that's when, when I went I went looking in uh, through there. I wasn't even, I wasn't even uh, looking for uh, Sasquatch when I run across uh, them down there. I was looking for big deer. Uh-huh. Can, can you share what wildlife management area that is? Uh, it's in the divide. Oh, that's the, that's what it's called, the Divide Wildlife Management Area in Tishmingo County. Very interesting. Um, that was a very interesting uh, story at the end. I know you'd kind of shared that the first time, but there is definitely uh, some interesting details in it this time as well. So, listeners, if you know anything about the Divide wildlife management area in Tishmingo County, uh, Mississippi, right? Um, You're right. Stay on the east side. Put, Stay yeah. on the east side of the town of Right. Don't go on the west side. Okay. East side of the creek? Oh, it's the Tom Bigby Waterway. Okay. The Tennessee Tom Bigby uh, Waterway was, uh, connects the Tennessee River to the uh, Tom Bigby River. It's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a large channel that goes down there it's man-made uh but uh yeah it's it's probably a quarter mile wide i don't know how deep it is I ain't there swim it but uh it's uh largest uh go from the uh, tennessee river to the tom big b uh, river through the ten tom there uh you can probably see it on a map if you're looking at a map sure uh is uh in tishmingo county it runs uh across uh Highway 72 around Burnsville, Mississippi, just east of Burnsville. Well, there you go, listeners. If you've experienced anything weird in there, uh, definitely let me know or put it in the comments so people can share. But Joe, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. You, You've had some some wild things happen. And uh, thank you so much for for hanging out. I'm sure there's some new listeners this time that are like, you know, I've got something weird happening in my house. How do I get in touch with Joe? Well, uh, send, send you a comment or a holler at you. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, Joseph Nathaniel Flippo. Uh, it's no secret. All right. uh, people that... People around here know uh, know me, know what I do. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that uh, say I'm an expert, but I just I've got real life experience. I don't sit around and uh, look at uh, Sasquatch through a screen and uh, think about anything. And there's a lot of people who claim to be experts that they're not experts. They they're they're experts in their own mind. But if you get chased out of the woods, you don't know what you're doing. You're harassing wildlife. Mm, man, wild stuff. Well, thank you so much right. for, for hanging out today, Joe. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I will. I've been doing this for a while. Like I said, I told you before, I, I talk for days about this because it's my jam. That's stuff that I know. And it amazes me that people don't know about this stuff because I started out as a skeptic and I didn't even... Till I saw one, and I had to uh, admit, look, I saw it. It's got to be there. That's when I started looking, and things started clicking. Mm. But uh, you know, I haven't learned anything that anybody else that takes the time can't learn. Uh, knowing what to look for sometimes is uh, just as important as knowing what to not look for. And uh, you got to be able to uh, look and say, if a man can make this. 90% of the time, he probably did. Mm-hmm. But if 
but it, it, if you got if you got a, a oak tree that's got a 15, 16 inch base that's upside down, jammed in the ground. A man didn't do that unless there's a bunch of tractor uh, uh, prints all around it, and they'll be there a while. But, but you know, if, if it's not just obvious that uh, a man couldn't do it, uh, I always give the benefit of the doubt to humans because humans are in the woods a lot, a lot that other people don't realize. You know, you're not the only ones that's in the woods, and you got to be careful too. Uh, I had I had a couple of experts get uh, mad at me one time uh, and uh, kicked me out of their group because I asked them uh, uh, when they're in the woods, how do they know that when uh, they're hollering and something answering that it's not another uh, uh, expert uh, hollering back at them? And uh, they didn't seem to like that too well. But uh, you know, you got to you got to be able to to know what the real thing is by knowing what the uh, fakes are. Absolutely. You got to be okay with people asking questions. You know, that's a, that's a big red flag if you're not. So. But I know there's, there's people that, uh, that, uh, make comments, say that, you know, I'm, I'm a fraud or whatever, or I, I, I don't lie. I say, look, just come in the woods with me. I don't ever charge anybody for anything out there. If they uh-huh. ask me and they need help, I know how it is. I've been there. I've been on both sides of it. So, Oh, I say, listen, I'll come down and look, whatever, where that, you know, depends on where it is and uh, uh, how I'm, I'm able to get there uh, because of my schedule. But this time of year is pretty, it's pretty uh, picked up and I do stuff. I, I was actually on the Internet uh, uh, today looking up some uh, information about a place uh, down there in uh, Hernando, uh, uh, DeSoto uh, National uh, Park down here in South Mississippi. They got some stuff going on down there that's interesting. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed talking with you, Dale. Uh, feel free to holler at me if you need if you uh, need to ask a question or whatever. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I've not had any experience with it, I don't have a problem saying I don't know, but we'll figure it out. That's right. And, I appreciate uh, that. You know, that's so. Uh, you know, that's that's goes for a lot of different things and and you can keep them out of the yard people say you can't there's ways to do that but that's a different show all in itself absolutely uh, well joe thank you sir oh you're welcome uh you have a good day and uh i hope y'all have a good uh, rest of the month uh, it's holiday season coming up, so uh, listen listen for uh, that uh, family member that don't mind telling you the crazy stuff because they just might be right. Oh, I love it. That That's that's good advice. That's good advice. Well, all right. I'll be in touch with you, Joe. All right. It's uh, good talking to you. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all it's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because i know you haven't been sleeping i understand what you're going through and i appreciate every one of you listening